get into it i'd like to show you the outline of my talk so basically i have divided this talk into three sections and i'll begin by describing briefly the major specification of the uh, tomotherapy system uh, then i will look into the unique feature of the mlc through describing the treatment delivery sinogram and finally i will focus on the adaptation system that uh, provided by Accure, particularly looking here for the precise art and precise RTX. So the system has been delivered to KFMC uh, on 2nd of August 2022. And just for context, the main reason for us to uh, get this technology is to improve the therapeutic ratio, which is uh, the ratio of the TCB to NTCB at a specific uh, level of uh, response. Now, as displayed in this photo uh, or this graph, the TCB is following or increasing the dose will give you an optimum TCB, but this will be at the expense of uh, NTCB. Uh, within this technology or having this technology definitely will improve the, uh, the, the therapeutic ratio as we're going uh, to discuss today. So uh, just for context, uh, just the major specification of the system or the RAD Exact 9X has a single 6 MV and flattened uh, beam that is capable in delivering 1,000 uh, centigrade per minute uh, in terms of uh, geometric uh, or in terms of uh, geometric setup. It has an SSD of uh, 85 centimeter along with a bore diameter of 85 centimeter as well. Uh, the system also cubed with the MPCT for uh, IGRT application, uh, along with helical CT as an add-on uh, option. Also, the system has this unique of 64 binary MLC, uh, which we're going to discuss uh, later on in greater details. So our experience with the planning system, so we have uh, two precision working station, uh, along with one MDU uh, suit, uh, suite for, uh, uh, for contouring. And this system can facilitate almost all of the essential planning uh, features, uh, but still our oncologists prefer to do the contouring in the, in the variant system. Then we export all of these contours to precision uh, working station for an additional planning uh, procedure. So in terms of treatment planning, uh, we have license for, to deliver helical and direct uh, modes through utilizing either uh, fixed or dynamic uh, jump mode settings. So within this uh, context, uh, with the helical mode, the gantry will move continuously during the plan while you are modulate, or while the MLC modulating the beam. Uh, similarly, the couch will uh, continuously uh, move during the treatment. On the other side here, Let's say if you want to uh, use uh, a couple of tangential fields uh, uh, to treat breast patients, for instance, it might be a good idea to consider the direct mode as well. Just a few notes about the, the jaw mode. So the jaw mode in TOMO system uh, move in Y direction, and therefore it will define the longitudinal uh, field size uh, of the beam. Um, and within this context, now we have three nominal field size. We have 5 cm, 2.5 cm, and 1 cm. Um, notably, the MLC also will move in Y direction as well, but it will define the beam laterally. So uh, additionally, uh, as I suggested, or as, as I mentioned previously, there's two uh, modes. We have fixed and uh, we have dynamic jaw. So the fixed jaw mode, as the name suggested, the jaw will be fixed throughout the treatment, uh, while for the dynamic jaw, the, uh, the target or the, the jaw will move uh, to follow the trajectory of target motion uh, in a sliding window uh, style of design. So let's look for a clinical example. So displayed here is a plan for spinal mitts. Uh, so in the right side here, we have used a fixed jaw mode with 5 cm. And as you can see in this, uh, in this dose color wash, it might be a really good idea to diminish the dose between uh, these uh, two targets. So when we have planned this case again using dynamic jaw mode, using the same field size, 
uh, we were able to uh, to get rid of the uh, or damage the dose between these two targets. Um, this is due to the uh, sharp soap and penumbra uh, related with the dynamic geo mode. So thinking about the MLC specification, so the system uh, cubed with 64 binary MLC, uh, where at any moment it's pro the leaf is programmed to either fully blocking the field or fully open uh, during the uh, radiation. It has a resolution of 6.25 millimeter at the IC center and a maximum field of view of 40 centimeter. Therefore, the maximum field size of the system is going to be uh, 5 by 40 centimeter. It's very speedy, 250 centimeter per second. And just quick comparison with the conventional LENAC. So the speed here is significantly less. And uh, the main reason maybe this rotary motors are not providing an adequate uh, torque. So in other words, in order to increase the torque, you have to have a new rotary motors with very large power. But I guess this is going to be not feasible due to the large uh, installation space required in the Lena grid. So within this context, a very interesting paper that has been published in medical physics. And the argument here is that conventional MLCs typically have a maximum leaf speed of three to four centimeter per second, whereas the target motion is likely to exceed uh, and even can reach up to uh, 9.4 centimeter per second. And they claim that these discrepancies in the speed may influence obtaining an optimum uh, tumor, uh, um, an optimum blank quality, and therefore it will influence the tumor control probability. So another source of uncertainty that related with the motor-driven MLC is the interplay effect, which is basically describing the synchronization or the interaction between the MLC and the tumor as both are moving uh, uh, maybe in the same time or in different directions or in the same direction. So it's really a random process. Uh, so this topic has been really discussed in more details in my recent publication that I have published just a few months uh, ago. So uh, additionally, this is another uh, interesting paper that was published to evaluate the dosimetric consequences that related with uh, intraplay effect. And uh, the aim of this paper was to evaluate the potential differences uh, between uh, the potential dosimetric differences due to the intraplay effect. And what, what they have done, they have uh, delivered a very well modulated VMAT blank, the uh, head and neck one, uh, to a phantom during two scenarios. The first one was during a stationary phantom, the second one during a mobile phantom. And what they have concluded is that uh, the intraplay effect may have or may give you a dose discrepancies around uh, 1%. So, uh, so within this context, uh, in tomotherapy, the, uh, the, the treatment delivery for one full rotation is divided into 51 uh, projections that span uh, on around 7.06 uh, degree of uh, gantry rotation. And maybe this sketch will uh, maybe make life very easy. Uh, so, uh, so what's displayed here is the number of projections for only one gantry rotations as a function of the number of uh, MLC. And uh, so the projection basically it's uh, is, is basically characterizing the leaf and uh, open close uh, time. Uh, so and each voxel in here representing a beam length. Uh, and the shading here representing, for instance, whether if the leaf is open or closed, uh, for instance here, white, mean the uh, if the voxel uh, if the color is white then that means the leaf is closed for the entire projection if it is black it means that it's open for the entire projection and gray may be uh, open less than 100 percent of the projection time um, this might be a very boring i would say cyanogram but a typical cyanogram looks like something like this so uh, let's look for some clinical example. But before that, I would like to uh, share with you our eligibility criteria. So mostly we are trying to make this machine as, speci as specialized as possible uh, through treating all the extended fields, for instance, uh, head and neck, maybe re-irradiation head and neck, 
due to uh, an, uh, or because this kind of cases requires an additional attention to the uh, organs at, at risk constraints. Maybe bilateral also sometimes difficult to be managed with conventional LENAC. Uh, but almost all of our CSI patients now are treated in tomotherapy. And why is that? Because in tomotherapy, uh, you can treat as long as one 305 centimeter. So uh, you will avoid the challenge of having uh, multiple isocenter as it is the case with the conventional LENAC. Also, you will avoid the, uh, avoid the set of uncertainties that, uh, uh, that you may encounter at the junction areas. So, uh, and here is a really interesting case. It's a bilateral uh, breast case that has been done by Dr. Reham. I think she's sitting over there. So what we have here in the left side, we have the VMAT plan. And in the right side, we have uh, the TOMO therapy plan. And the color wash here displaying the 12th uh, person. So was, I was looking for those spillage in this situation. So so even with, with, with this low dose radiation, TOMO therapy was a capable and sculpt radiation around this uh, complex uh, target. So in terms of dosimetric consequences, uh, we were looking for the hard dose, uh, particularly the mean, the V5, V10, and V15. And looking closely to this number, the tomotherapy was able to diminish the dose to the heart by almost uh, four grade. Also, a uh, similar improvement has been noticed to the other metrics. Uh, this is even without DIBH. With DIBH, I guess the, the, these numbers will improve even uh, uh, better, more. So uh, similar improvements also has been noticed for the uh, lung dose. I mean specifically here for V5 grade, the dose has been reduced by uh, more than uh, 50%. Now I'd like to move to discuss the adaptation system that provided by Acura, uh, particularly here looking for precise art and precise RTX. So uh, this is the so this is basically the interface of the uh, planning system, and we have here the precise art, and uh, next to it we have the precise RTX. Uh, the precise art is designed for offline. Uh, analysis while the precise art, uh, RTX is may or might be used for uh, replan. So, uh, so again, the precise art is a, a third-party software that developed by uh, uh, by uh, uh, or uh, yeah, it's developed by people from Ohio, and it's it's, it's called the MIM software that integrated inside the precision working station. And how does it really work? It requires two sets of data, it's a reference one and the treatment delivery data. So focusing on the reference data, basically in the reference data, the software will look for the uh, planning data, the data that will be uh, gotten from the precision uh, working station, CT, RT plan, RT dose, along with the sinogram that we have discussed uh, early. The, the second set of data is basically the treatment delivery data, and this is data usually uh, will be uh, gotten during the fraction delivery. And basically, the first set of data is going to be the MPCT uh, image registration along with the MPCT uh, sinogram. And here is a, here is a, like a sample of the uh, data that you can find in a precise art. So as soon as the fraction is complete, uh, completed, you will find a dose volume histogram, uh, a table comparing the dose constraints, uh, and maybe some graphs uh, too. And with a glance, or with a quick glance, you can judge uh, the quality of the beam uh, and uh, evaluate the need for uh, adaptation. So this uh, slides, uh, or this uh, chart, representing our uh, clinical workflow for adaptation. So, so we start the normal clinical routine by delivering the fraction. Then in the precise art, we evaluate the numbers in terms of uh, meeting our planning criteria or not. Uh, if it is not, if it is meet, then we don't need obviously adaptation, then we follow our daily routine work. 
let's say if the uh, if some of the uh, of the of the uh, of the kunisna has not met then we first of all we 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 investigate the reason behind that uh, is there any tumor shrink long break maybe in patient that causing these discrepancies in the uh, in the plan and deliver those and other sorts of uh, inconsistency such as uh, differences in the reference setup and the MVCT setup. And after that, we acquire a new CT, then we deform and control the original plan into the new image using the B-size art, and then we optimize the plan and we deliver uh, the fraction. So, uh, so the primary goal of this talk was to provide a conceptual uh, discussion about uh, the right exact 9x system that alter alternatively known as tomotherapy and uh, to sum up uh, we have also shown that this system can enhance TCB and TCB this radiation basically to organs at risk as uh, we have discussed in the bilateral breast also without junction now you can treat up to 135 uh, cm uh, the precise art and the precise RTX is really an interesting software to be used as an, uh, as an adaptation system. But again, it's an offline one. I guess Accurate now is working with uh, research uh, to, uh, to, uh, to develop a new uh, online uh, analysis system. Software limitations, the MLC is quite noisy. Patient always complaining about it. In terms of the planning, also you cannot move the couch lat laterally more than 2 cm, and the optimization time uh, is very, very long. And even if you want to do a minor changing in the plan, it will also take a uh, long time. I guess my colleague, the physicist sitting there, also agree with me on this point. Uh, also, another important point if the radius is more than 40 cm, it might be really challenging. Uh, to uh, obtain an optimum uh, plan. The adaptation system that we got, it's really good, but it is, it's going to take time. And in my opinion, adaptation has to be really fast within 10 minutes. And uh, thank you for your attention.